All right, Mr. Bay, we have everything you asked for. We have all the action shots. We have shots of the characters. We have dialogue. We have quick edits. We have fast edits. We got big zooms. We got crazy shots with all the drone operators that you asked for. We got all the interior drone shots, the exterior drone shots, some kind of sort of explosions, some cool creative ideas and all this ready to go and be put together. How do you want us to put it all together? Yes. We're not the bad guys. We're just the guys trying to get home. We don't get to walk off into the sunset. Well. Danny, everybody knows how dangerous you are. Do you? You get your helos out of here now! I'm gonna get you back home, little brother. I'm gonna get everybody home. Uh, and today we have Ambulance, or honestly, as I prefer to refer to it by its title sequence, Ambu Los Angeles. Mm. Yeah, Michael Bay's newest film. Michael Bay at this point is, oh, we're just jumping right in, aren't we? Uh, yeah, Michael Bay is kind of a household name at this point. Love him or hate him, he's been in the industry for years, he's been making movies for decades, literally decades, and I mean, he's got money and the tools and the fan base to follow. I, he kind of gets grouped into that same area that people like, I don't know, like Zack Snyder might, or just like certain directors that just kind of are doing their own thing, are making movies that are like stylistic or a certain, a certain type, maybe formulaic, I don't know. Uh, you can't see any of the things my hands are doing right now because of this, but this is in honor of this movie, because this movie loves shots like this. Like, 90% of the movie is shots like this. So, you know what? Here we are. This is my face. Get used to it. So, yeah, like I said, Ambulance came out this year, 2022, directed by Michael Bay. If you don't know his previous works, I mean, you know him from... I mean, he's done most of the Transformers movies, right? Which are... You know, started off with decent intentions, but have kind of gone, eh. Uh, he has had better films. If you go back to the 90s, he did, like, The Rock, which is, I mean, one of his better works. He's done other stuff as well. One of the biggest headaches of a movie that I ever watched was Six Underground, and Michael Bay brought us that, so fuck you very much. I don't hate Michael Bay. I just don't quite respect him. I feel like there's a lot more under the hood that he could access, and he could be capable of doing many a great thing in film. But I feel like he just kind of settles for what he's become known for, which is big blockbuster, fake looking explosions, Hollywood action, forego the plot for poorly written characters and product placement and just like action that makes no sense. You got to turn off your brain for the action to work. This movie surprisingly is a bit of an exception to all those rules. The cast are one of the best parts of this film. I think it's cast very well. As you can no doubt tell by the trailer, it stars my, my boy over here, Yahya Abdul-Mateen III, who I love. Uh, I kind of got like my first introduction to him through Candyman, which is another movie that I love and, you know, much better film to check out if you get a chance. But he's popping up in more and more, so it's cool to see him even making his way into the big American blockbuster scene. But yeah, we got Yaya over here. We have, of course, Jake Gyllenhaal, which again, like borderline household name, whether you know him from his roots of like Donnie Darko, like Octa, Spider-Man, stuff like that. Pleasant surprise, we have, I think it's Isa Gonzalez, or Isa, Isa, I think it's Isa, but at first I was like, man, what do I know her from? And then I was looking into her filmography, and I was like, oh, I know her. She was on the other side of the law as one of the kind of the, the uh, bad guy characters in Baby Driver. Uh, I liked her character a lot. And uh, on a personal note, because I love this, uh, I also forgot, so I am, I'm a big fan of from Dust Till Dawn, the first one, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. And some years ago, Robert Rodriguez, the, the director of that, made a three season like show based on the movie that was actually pretty decent. And she was one of the main leads in that. So cool for me to be able to see her again on screen. I like that, she's still getting work. Here is the thing. Ambulance is, uh, very surprisingly, not necessarily a bad movie. Uh, could be a lot better but could be a lot worse. You're getting what you paid for and you kind of know what you're getting into. Starting with pros, right? We always got to start with the pros. The cast. Cast is probably the best part about this. The chemistry that these three actors have, the three ones that I mentioned, and how they fare in the film, just in terms of their acting chops, their chemistry with each other, their performances overall, great. 
the emotional, intense, even with the script they're working with and the movie itself, like they are, you know, they ground this thing. Love him or hate him, you're there for him. And for me, at least, I was interested to see how it was all going to pan out. Like I was along for the ride. I was intrigued, interested. And these characters were doing a good job of like keeping me along for the ride. Visuals and like, is it HD? Yeah, sure. It's, it's HD. Um, whenever shots are stable, I mean, they look like well enough. Production design, set design, sure, like that all holds up. The action, uh, leaves a bit to be desired, I'm not gonna lie. There are moments in the film that feels like they're setting up for something bigger, and then it doesn't just pan out, which is kind of weird, so a lot of the a lot of moments in the film are a bit anticlimactic where other action films might actually have a payoff, you know? The idea of incorporating drone shots into this and actually hiring someone to like do a lot of steady cam takes with a drone operator's rig and like whether they're interior or exterior, the idea is neat. I mean, it's, it's interesting and incorporating it in the film like does and doesn't work. When it does work, sure, I'm here for it. There's some fairly dramatic stakes and some fairly emotional scenes that like kind of have a payoff but nothing that you're gonna write home about and nothing that i was on the edge of my seat for but i guess the biggest pro of all is that this is not michael bay's worst film it's one of his better ones i would think i don't think it's like great but i mean it's still like all things considered it could have been a lot worse and it was better than i thought it was gonna be the biggest con i have with this film is like okay sure drone camera work and shots are incorporated sure there's a lot of cool ideas on paper but execution uh as you can tell by the way that i'm kind of like mocking the idea of it with the way i'm doing my re review now like 90 percent of the film are these close and even lower angle shots than this so much of the film feels like claustrophobic tight dizzying just for the sake of it we went to go see this in imax because we thought why not go big or go home let's get like Let's get intoxicated and watch Michael Bay's newest film in IMAX. And God, like, you gotta be sitting far away because, like, the camera work is so, like, up close and then it stays. And even when people are moving around, it follows them so up close. It's disorienting. It's dizzying. If you get motion sickness, this film will probably make you sick. Like, it's, it's a little much. If you're gonna incorporate a drone, there's so many potential, like, setups for shots that could have been these really cool drone tracking shots that last as long as you know the stairwell scene of atomic blonde or that uh building scene from goodfellas or like all or uh, like any scene from the revenant right or like i don't know so the examples go on you have all these moments where like, the, the drone starts following the action swooping low and doing these cool like jerry bruckheimer-esque like following shots of the action and could be zooming in and out and around and actually making for interesting camera work and these really cool well set up shots. No, not a, I count it if you want. Not a single drone shot of the aside from the establishing shots of the city, aside from the cityscape, none of the drone shots in this film last longer than like five or six seconds. And it's stupid. Like there's my my, my roommate who's also another um, I don't know if I say film critic, but he enjoys film as well and he also aims to make them in his life. Uh, he put it best. This film needs room to breathe, and the editing of this film does not allow for that. This this film's camera direction is suffocating us as the audience, and like suffocating the film. Like, give some shots time to breathe and for us to absorb it. Like, you can have quick cuts here and there, right? Like, I don't have any problem with that. But when it's so quick and it's like drone shot, drone shot, action shot, drone shot, cut, cut this, and then you cut to the interior of the ambulance, and it's like claustrophobic is all get out inside that ambulance and even when things are happening you can kind of you can kind of follow what's happening right but god it's just so quick and cut and just like in oh we just need to take a step out show us what's going on and give us a little bit of better direction and camera work and you got a lot of like unnecessary characters and silly stuff in this film like even some character introductions are like random a little bit out of place jarring characters that exist like it's just like okay this guy's a character so are his character traits that he has these like silly quirks and that's gonna not play into the narrative until it does in a very weird silly kind of dumb way like michael bay likes doing a lot of that like i don't know if he's trying to inject comedy into it which i get that you know i don't mind if you inject comedy into your fucking action movie but like do it in a way that's not borderline nonsensical or like not where I'm sitting there being like, that's just kind of silly. Like, 
have some meaning or some more sense to it, you know, if you wouldn't mind, please. You had some character arcs going on, right? But like you kind of, the film starts to set up like a, at least one or two character arcs that don't really pan out like the way that you think they would. Which normally you could say, oh, need subversion expectation. But when it's like a Jamie Lannister character arc, that fucking Shakespearean tragedy, that's different. That's like a wasted character arc. And this film definitely had at least one big one of those. This film is definitely like an action thriller for sure. But really it's like all action, no thrills. Again, a lot of this film is like set up, right? It's them going, like they're, they're trying to get away from the cops. They're being chased over all over LA. They're trying to like figure out a plan. But it feels like 80% of the film is them trying to figure out what to do next. And it's like, oh, go over here. All right, now get us out of here. All right, we're going to go over, try going over there. All right, now get us out of here. And it's like, when is shit going to happen? It's just them driving around and it's just like drone shots and tracking shots and action shots of an ambulance being chased by a bunch of police cars and officers and shoppers. And it's like, what's the point of all this? Like, usually in your action movie you want the action to happen you want there to be moments where things are have definitive consequence on the film at large to have happen either be interesting or action-packed or you know anything like that but instead it's just like it's just kind of like action sure in the sense of oh things are happening but no th i wasn't thrilled i wasn't overly intrigued or on the edge of my seat i was just like okay this is happening this is mildly interesting how on earth is this is this gonna pan out <laughs> like this movie definitely isn't gonna make it on like a top 10 list for me for the year but this is not I don't think this would even be in the worst, like the top five worst films that I've seen this year. This wasn't like a bad watch. It was just like, don't, don't see it in theaters. You can skip this one in theaters. Like, check this one out. Most likely stream it a year from now when it's streamable. People forgot this movie was even playing right now. But like this movie just, just came out this weekend. But you don't need to see this in theaters. I'm telling you that now. If you are a Michael Bay Die Hard fan, then yes, go see it. Go see it on the silver screen. You'll probably like it and enjoy yourself. Uh, but, I mean, hell, I, I'd i rather you watch Army of the Dead. And I am not an advocate for that film. But at least Army of the Dead was more action-packed and interesting than this. This movie does have pros. It also has cons, but it has pros. It's not a bad film. I didn't hate watching it. I had a decent time. I would give Am Ambulance, Ambu Los Angeles, I'd give it a... If I'm being fair, like a low 3 out of 5, right? Like a low 3 out of 5. It is definitely below average. It's not as bad that a 2 would be warranted, but it's below average. You don't need to see it in the theaters. It has just enough pros to not be like a bad film, right? Like it has a, lot, a good amount of stuff going for it, and a lot of what it tries to do kind of works, but it works in that like filmed and made for TV, like just interesting enough way where it's not like ambulance isn't like subversive or super creative or like a great action film that would redefine michael bay's career it's just like the fact that it's up there right now is his highest rated film and it's only because it's not like the reviews for it are oh it's actually not bad like it's not that bad like that's that also says a lot and it's like uh, like that's i don't know i i really wish the guy would make better films i think if it'd be cool if he got like a better writer better characters and actually like you know incorporate his style right but make it into a film that at least has interesting action it's like sucker punch right is sucker punch a good film that's up for heavy debate am i at least gonna have a good time watching sucker punch because through all the crazy Zack snyder action and stylistic nonsense there's some solid action scenes character moments there's some solid enough i can grab onto where i can actually like really hold on and enjoy the ride yeah something like that right it's like michael bay embrace your style like you always do but just you know put more substance in your films maybe maybe i don't know call me crazy but that is all the time i have for today as always thank you for watching Appreciate the, the view, the support, and yeah, that was my review of Ambulance. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of whatever I record or do. And goodbye, travelers. And Bay out.